Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Illinois Central Gulf operations on the Sparta District. I'm going to point out a very helpful resource for me as I was designing this layout, and that is this book here. Let me see if I can get it in. The Illinois Central Gulf in, col in Color, Volume 3, The Sparta District. This is a very helpful book if you have any interest in the operations of the Sparta District. The book came out actually about the time that I started building this layout. I had already decided that I wanted to build it based upon the Sparta District. Sometimes people model based upon what they would rail fan when they were a child. Honestly, the Sparta District was pretty close to where I grew up. However, that was not the route that I would rail fan. I rail fanned the former Illinois Central St. Louis District. But one of the things that I loved about the Sparta District was when I was a child, I remember um, driving past Captain Mine and seeing so many things on the line itself. Captain Mine dominated. There were always so many coal hoppers there, coal trains going constantly it seemed. And I barely remember the line from Redbud when it was in operation to East St. Louis. Uh, and looking back on it, I, I, I would have been growing up right at the very end of the era. Now, I'm talking about this in one sense, the historical aspect, because I want you to understand how I operate this layout. I model the early to mid-1980s Illinois Central Gulf, but I'm not exactly faithful to the historical circumstances. So, for instance, when we go over to Percy, Illinois, you'll notice that there's a standard oil facility there that was long gone, as well as the lumber yard was long gone. Also, uh, for instance, I have Streamline Mine on this layout, but in the early 1980s, it ended up catching on fire and all the coal was being diverted over to Captain Mine. Also, I do have through trains that go on this layout. However, by the 1980s, that was no longer a possibility. South of Murfreesboro, the old GMO main line had been severed, and it was, as a result, there were no through trains. There was essentially a local train as well as the coal trains uh, coming out of Captain Mine as well as another mine, uh, which was served by the Missouri Pacific. Uh, however, they did actually have trackage rights on the uh, Sparta district. So in one sense, what I am doing is looking at what was there historically at one time, but I'm not exactly faithful to the historical circumstances. So for instance, around the time that I'm modeling, the line also was severed at Redbud. Um, and so from Redbud to East St. Louis, that track was all pulled up. So you can actually look online and there are three series of videos of the Illinois Central Gulf on the Sparta District, which are phenomenal videos. They've been up for years, just which shows what the traffic looked like in the last days that the line was being served. So even though I'm not exactly faithful to the historical circumstances of what happened, I am trying to be somewhat faithful to what the line actually uh, contained. So for instance, we're here in Murfreesboro right now. In Murfreesboro, you'll notice that there was a scrap yard, a lumber yard, and over here, there is an old roundhouse. And there was actually a printing company 
that had located in the old roundhouse and then subsequently had built a large building behind it. There were abandoned factories. And many of the streets themselves were brick. If you look at the history of Murfreesboro, at one time there was a large uh, brick factory. It had uh, um, closed. In fact, I think it had burnt down, if I recall correctly, in the early 1900s. But at one time, so many bricks were produced in Murfreesboro. And as a result, many of the side roads still to this day are covered in those bricks. So this is Murfreesboro, and this is, in one sense, a little explanation of why I designed Murfreesboro the way that I did. So here we are at Captain Mine. Captain Mine definitely dominated the Sparta district. If you do any historical research into the mine, you'll notice that at one time it had the captain. It was the largest drag shovel ever created. I think it's actually been surpassed in recent years, but um, for, for years it was the largest and it dominated the skyline. If you look at any pictures online with cars or people standing right next to the captain, the captain was enormous. So growing up, I loved it whenever we would drive by Captain Mine uh, and seeing all the coal hoppers that were parked there. Unlike many other yards, the yard there at Captain was actually stub-ended. So people kind of look at this and say, well, that's not prototypical. Actually, it is. If you look at Captain Mine, it was a stub-ended yard. Of course, uh, the era that I'm modeling was kind of the last big hurrah for Captain Mine. In the early 1990s, the Clean Air Act was passed. Captain Mine, as well as much of, uh, would produce as much of the mines in Southern Illinois did, coal that was high in sulfur content. As a result of this, demand for that kind of coal decreased. All the mines essentially subsequently closed as a result of that passage, and many people lost their jobs. I remember um, at that time that with the loss of the coal industry, unemployment rates uh, just shot up. Many people were uh, leaving the area. Uh, people who had very well-paying jobs at the mine ended up having to take jobs that paid far less in other fields. I remember the junior colleges being full of uh, former miners who were there looking for other career opportunities. So the economy in Southern Illinois changed a great deal right at the time well, right after the era that I'm modeling. I'm, in one sense, modeling the last days of what once was and a way of life that, in one sense, no longer exists. As I had mentioned earlier, about the time that I'm modeling a streamlined mine, the tipple had burnt down, so the coal was actually being shipped over to Captain Mine for processing and then shipped out from Captain Mine. Percy for me is a interesting small town. There at Percy you had a grain elevator. It's also where the tracks, the uh, Sparta district, converged with the old Missouri Pacific. And so if you look here, there was actually a uh, depot that was served by the old GM&O. About the era that I'm modeling, this actually was in, if I recall correctly, a p kind of like a pinkish paint scheme. I kind of uh, thought about doing that coloration, but I ultimately kind of decided with the, old, uh, the older coloration. 
So there was a diamond there uh, where the Missouri Pacific and Illinois Central Gulf crossed. Percy, like I said, by the time that I model, no longer had the oil facility or the lumber yard. However, in one sense, I'm wanting to re recreate what once was and the possibility. What would have happened had these industries still been in operation? What would they have looked like in the 80s? So, and it's kind of a way for me to have a little bit more online traffic, considering that I basically have one local train that comes through and serves these industries. I want to be able to switch out occasionally and having a few additional industries provides me with that opportunity. So it's a look back at what was there historically, but imagining what would have happened had those businesses still been in operation in the 80s. Now we're over here in Sparta, Illinois. If you like comic books, maybe you know the history, but at one time, Sparta printed, if I recall correctly, the vast majority of the comic bo books produced in the world at one time. Spartan Printing was a major employer throughout Southern Illinois, and the old Gimeno, Illinois Central Gulf served it it was one of the largest customers on the line. In fact, not only was it served by boxcar, but it was also served by trailer on flat car. It wasn't served directly by trailer on flat car in Sparta, but uh, many people. It was not served by trailer on flat car in Sparta. Rather, instead, drivers would take the trailers over to Redbud. And there at Redbud, at one time, there was a piggyback ramp that uh, the trailers would go on, the uh, trailer on flat cars. So Sparta would take sh uh, ship comic books and uh, other print printed material, drive it over by truck to Redbud. And at Redbud, they would put the trailers on the flat cars and be shipped out. And of course, you can't mention Sparta, Illinois without mentioning a famous movie, In the Heat of the Night, which was filmed there in Sparta, Illinois. A great movie if you've never seen it. There's a couple great shots of the old GMO there in Sparta. The station itself is still there and is now an art museum. Now we are here in Baldwin, Illinois. At one time, Baldwin had two major industries, the FS Grain Elevator, as well as the Baldwin Power Plant. The Baldwin Power Plant was built roughly uh, a decade or so before the time that I'm modeling, 10 to 15 years before. So it was a very active online customer at one time, coal had been loaded from Captain Mine and then brought here to Baldwin. The power plant is still in operation, though its days are coming to a drastic close. So here we are at Redbud, Illinois. Redbud had a large grain elevator served by rail, as well as at one time, Redbud had a furnace factory. Unfortunately, I did not have room to include the furnace factory and I've never been able to see pictures of what the factory even looked like. So I am kind of intrigued. I, as you can probably tell, I love looking at history and what once was. So I, I regret that I did not have the room to include it as part of the Redbud complex, but uh, I do have the large grain elevator like it somewhat existed there at Redbud. Also, you'll notice that there's a trailer parked over on the other side, which is kind of a testament, a little homage to the old 
trailer on flat car loading ramp, which was there in Redbud. So here we are over in East St. Louis. I'm going to be the first to admit that East St. Louis is not at all prototypical. If you look at what the actual industries were in the East St. Louis area, there would have been Monsanto Chemical, there would have been the Coal Docks, and there were grain elevators as well as large warehouses. Those would have been the industries that dominated. I, however, have a lot of factory buildings, that sort of thing. In one sense, convenience. I was trying to convey the spirit in one sense of East St. Louis, not the actual historical reality of East St. Louis. So I do want to reflect upon why I model this, why I model the Illinois Central Gulf and this line in particular. First, I loved Captain Mine when I was a child. I grew up and I remember seeing huge strip pits and drag lines dot the sky. If you look at what is left currently of the Sparta district, there's hardly anything left. When you think back, this was the old GMO main line, but all that currently exists is essentially the line uh, that ends there at Captain Mine and that goes to Bald One. Coal mines were once served by rail, like Captain, and they're essentially all gone. The famous Captain Shovel is long gone. There are, in recent years, a couple mines that have repopulated. However, those tend to be much smaller in character. And that, th that coal is destined for the export market and is shipped by truck to the barges there on the Mississippi River. The printing facilities there at Sparta, Spartan Printing, are long gone, as well as at Murfreesboro. The industries in Redbud are gone, such as the industry at Redbud, the furnace factory is gone. And Ava and Murfreesboro and Redbud are no longer served by, by the rail. The Baldwin power plant is slated for closure in the near future. In one sense, this layout reminds me of what once was. People who worked hard in mines, on farms, at printing plants, and people who depended upon the railroad. The layout looks back at a time when nearly everything has changed. We went from low unemployment to a period of high unemployment in southern Illinois with the closure of the mines. We went from a period of high wages to lower wages as a, as a result of the displacement of those workers, and communities suffered for years. Progress has taken its toll on the old Sparta district. I remember when NAFTA was being discussed and on how it would create jobs, and we saw firsthand how, in one sense, the old Spartan printing uh, plant was purchased by a foreign, I believe it was a Mexican firm, which did not last for very long. Those jobs, which were stable and which had decent wages anyway for Southern Illinois, or so I'm told, those jobs were sent elsewhere and, not, and had not returned. So time has taken its toll on the old Sparta district but there is still hope. You know, there's that wonderful scripture passage, the bruised reed he will not break and the smoldering wick he will not quench. If you look at the Canadian National tracks, you can see that they have continued to invest in the Sparta district. There are trains that go to the docks there on the Kaskaskia River in fact, traffic seems to have picked up there. If you look at the old Captain Mine complex, 
it's now being served by, it's still being served by rail. No longer coal trains are leaving there, but car, but railroad cars are being repaired there and plastic pellets are being shipped out of there. So even as the district itself has changed over the years, there's still hope that maybe the, the future is just getting started on the district. So the way that I actually model the Sparta district is based upon historical reality, even if I'm not faithful to every structure, to every historical situation. Like I said, I have an occasional through train that goes uh, from Murfreesboro all the way to East St. Louis and back, as well as I model based upon the fact that by the 80s, traffic was drying up on the line, that there weren't as many customers, and that the historical reality isn't very good to the Sparta district. These were difficult times for railroads who in one sense no longer could invest in property, plant, and equipment. In the early 80s, we had the bankruptcy of great railroads such as the Rock Island. We already had the previous decade before the bankruptcy of the Penn Central, as well as we had the bankruptcy of the Milwaukee Road. So times were not being good to the railroad, and yet the railroad itself continued and still continues to this day. So it's a story about hope and perseverance. So on the, the layout itself, the way that I typically operate this is I have a local train that leaves East St. Louis and then goes all the way down to Murfreesboro, serving the industries online, as well as then returning from Murfreesboro back to East St. Louis. At East St. Louis and at Murfreesboro, I do have trains that are typically staged, and those trains in one sense represent through traffic that even though no longer existed at that time, I still have perhaps one or two through trains going, acting as if trains were on the way down from East St. Louis to Cairo, or from Cairo all the way up to East St. Louis. So I'm not sure if this is, is helpful or not, but I wanted to provide a little description of why I did what I did on this layout and how I operate the layout. I noticed that the operation video that I did a couple weeks ago was extremely, extremely popular, but I wanted to explain what I was actually doing on this line. Talk a little bit about the customers, talk a little bit about the way that I run the, the line itself. I'm hoping in the next upcoming month or two to do a couple more operation videos and that this video would be a helpful reference for you to understand why the layout is situated the way it is. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.